is going to make a short video, I guess. Because um, I get a lot of questions from people and more like comments about, oh, well, how can you sell your puppies for so much money and they're so expensive and just things in general. And I think every breeder gets that. So I want to show you what you don't get to see behind the scenes when you're buying a puppy or thinking about buying a puppy or whatever the case is, even rescue puppies. Those rescue places go through a lot of bull to keep those dogs healthy considering what and what situation they came from. So um, this is just some of it. But I just wanted to show you like um, what I have to do every two hours to keep this little one thriving. Um, it's like having a newborn. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, you always want to weigh them before the feeding. So that way you know how much food they got into them. So we're going to weigh her first. And it always helps to have yourself a good baby scale. And she's 4.1, which is great because, I don't know if you can see that, she was um, 3.8. Uh, oops, I think I turned the camera around. Yeah, I did. Let me flip it back. There we go. Um, she was 3.8 yesterday. So I was hoping that wasn't going to be her decline and her demise. Um, so she's gaining, which is good. Um, so last night I stopped the tube feeding. And this is pretty much what a tube feeding looks like. I'm not going to do it. We're going to do a regular feeding this time. But basically it's a French catheter with a syringe on it. Um, for dogs and puppies, you should be feeding them one cc per ounce of weight they are. So if they're a four ounce puppy, you're going to want to give them one cc of uh, fluid or uh, formula, whatever you decide to give them. And one cc is, is the same as um, one ml. A cc and an ml is the same, which it, on a regular syringe would be like right here, the one mark. So say you have a three ounce puppy, you're going to want to give them this whole syringe if you're going to tube feed them. So they gain an ounce, you're going to want to give them a four cc's and so on and so forth until they can nurse on their own or take the bottle or whatever the case has it. So that seems to be the sweet spot as far as like some people ask, well how do I know I'm feeding my puppy too much or too little? One cc per ounce per puppy and adjust as they get older. That seems to be the sweet spot. The sooner you can get them off the tube feeding and the sooner you can get them back to nursing like normal, the better. So try to encourage them to nurse from a bottle of their mom, whichever works. So we know she's 4.1. So now I have some formula in the bottle. And it's just for those of you who are like running to the store and getting like special bottles, this is just a regular infant bottle. Um, I've found that the um, bottles at the pet store are really suck as far as latching. It doesn't give the puppy enough room on the nipple to actually latch around the nipple correctly. So it's like a really tiny nipple and it doesn't, the mouth and the tongue sort of form around the nipple naturally from the mom. So those tiny nursing nipples you get from the pet store just don't cut it because they're not flexible enough. They're very tiny, unnatural to the mom's tit. And, um, these wider mouth nipples, they're most commonly referred to as breastfeeding nipples. You give these to normally um, a baby with poor latch or infants who have a bad tendency of getting nipple confused. So, But you want to get like some kind of orthopedic nipple or breastfeeding nipple and get an infant bottle. That's the best bet. Uh, don't even buy the pet store brand. Gerber makes a very good one too and Nook makes a very good one. So, and I also get the slowest flow. You don't want to get a half flow nipple, so get no, newborn nipples. Um, because if you get a higher flow nipple, the puppy could drink too fast and they could aspirate. And then you are going to just have a dead puppy. So what I do is, um, if he doesn't, like, grasp on it right away, which she's trying to, 
I just uh, save her the work and just open her mouth and put her mouth right on it. And like, as you can see, she knows right what to do. She usually takes with the, since she's not stimulating a tit versus like her mom, she's getting it direct. So she's not massaging anything. So she gets it like right from the bottle. So she gets it faster than normal. So she's going to be done faster. And if she falls off, you just put her back on. Never, also never feed them like a baby. Like, don't feed them upside down. Always feed them like they would be nursing from their mom naturally in this position. If you feed them upside down or like, kind of like if you're nursing a baby, they can aspirate or it could come back up. You don't want that. That's just, that can just cause issues. So I'm just making this video more of an informational thing because a lot of readers or people just with accidental litters occasionally get weak puppies and this happens a lot. It's of no fault of nobody's, it's just nature. Some puppies are strong enough to make it, some unfortunately aren't. So um, these are just some tips and tricks that I've learned that work as far as um, nursing a weak puppy back to health. If you want to stimulate her, some puppies fall asleep, you can rub their back. Um, she's doing pretty good. She's pretty hungry. Her last feeding was three hours ago, so she's uh, actually an hour behind. So she's pretty hungry. And her willing to nurse and feed from the bottle, um, as opposed to two days ago when she was being tube fed, indicates that she is getting stronger, which is always good. Now they could always think do a turn for the worst at this point they could always still pass but um as of right now she's doing pretty good okay and she's done she's like yep i'm done with that yep i'm full all right you know they're done when um well there's two reasons you know they're done when it starts coming out of their mouth number one and number two when their belly is nice and full their belly is going to swell up. That's a really indig And she's got the milk mustache. So, um, you tr want to never see it come from their nose. It could mean they aspirated some. So, always like keep an eye on that. If they're nursing and you see some coming out of their nose, immediately stop. Because that means they're, they're getting it in their lungs as opposed to in their stomach. And you don't want that. So, if you ever see it come out of their nose, stop what you're doing. Clearly, clear the dog's air puppy's airway and try again. So now we're going to check, we're going to reweigh her and we're going to check how much she drank. This is how we determine how many cc she drank. So this is what we're going to do. So she should be at least two points from where we weighed her before. Let me try again. Let me clear the scale. All right, and she's 4.3. So she took in at least 1.2 of milk, 0.2 ounces of milk, which is great for her size because she's getting this every two hours. So, all right, so what do you do next? All right, well, you could offer her some more milk if she wants. So we're going to try that now in case she's still hungry. And if she's not hungry, she'll pull away. And as you see, she's, she's done. But you always want to make sure. Sometimes they get tired or some goes down the wrong pipe and they pull themselves away. But yeah. And if she's not, another indication is that she's not like sucking on your fingers. She's pretty full. And her belly's pretty full. So you can see it from the back. That's a full belly. So. You can actually watch them drink from the bottle and watch their belly get real big. So one, thing's about, one thing about newborn puppies, when you're trying to um, uh, get them back to health, one of the biggest problems is people forget to get their puppies to poop. That sounds disgusting, but this is life. And um, the mom dog usually will eat 
her puppies poop for the first five to six weeks of their life. It's pretty disgusting. That's a part of breeding and raising puppies that you hardly ever hear about because nobody wants to hear about it. Nobody talks about it. But breeders know it. And um, moms eat, usually eat it and clear of it until the puppies start like eating solids. I don't know if it, the, the poop gets too raunchy at that point or too much of it that she just stops eating it. But um, usually between weaning and uh, eight weeks, they stop eating their poop. But one of the reasons they eat their poop is because in the wild, to ward off predators from sensing a nest and stuff like that, but another reason is newborns can't pass their own poop and they can't pee on their own uh, without being stimulated. So if the mom isn't constantly licking and stimulating them, they are going to back up with poop, they're going to back up with urine, and they're basically going to become toxic and die. So one of the issues with some people is they don't realize they have to do this. So um, I'm going to show you what you have to do, or what I do. It's really, really simple. Um, you can take a warm washcloth and you can do this, and, but it's a huge mess. So I found a much easier and better way to do this. I can do this with one hand. All right, let's try this. Let's turn the camera around. There. That's probably going to be better. Alright. So, you want to get the warm, water warm. Now, you don't want this hot. You don't want to scald the puppy. You want it at least, like, lukewarm. I would say warm as what you'd consider putting a newborn baby in. You know, warmer than that. And not cold either. You don't want to give the puppy a chill. So. And after you feed also, see how some of it's coming up? After you feed the puppies, you always want to like keep them upright for a little bit. You uh, don't, you know, don't want to turn them over like doing anything crazy. The warm water's taking forever to come up today. Starting to get warm finally. Um, a little colder. Alright, that's good. Alright, see if I can do this. What out with? Alright, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take them. Not too hot. Run warm water right over their private. Mm -hmm. This is going to make them urinate. So stimulate them to urinate, and it's also going to stimulate them to poop. And that way you don't have to clean up the poop, it goes right down the drain. And she's actually pooping right now. You can also go like this with their belly. This is this is what the mom would do naturally, by the way. This is this is why she's constantly licking and bathing her puppies. She's constantly stimulating them. So since a little red collar here, which needs a name soon. She doesn't get that stimulation from her mom because we have her separated for obvious reasons. Um, her mom would normally be doing this. I call it diaper duty. She'd be constantly licking her privates and getting her to pee, keeping her clean. But we got to take them. And this has to be done several times a day. Every time she eats, she, this has got to be done. It's disgusting, yes, I'm using my finger, but you know what? This is welcome to dog breeding. You could also take a towel. I had a towel ready, but I, I can't do it with one hand. So usually I would take a towel and use it, but this is working and I will wash my hands, so. 
All right, now you know she's done pooping when you stimulate her butt and nothing else is coming out, and yet it's still coming out. Sometimes you want to press a little bit, but not too hard. You don't even got to like touch her butt, just like the sides of her butt here. With the warm water, clean her off. Now if you want to get a little bit of mild soap, baby soap, um, clean her up. I use Johnson & Johnson's baby soap. That usually is uh, more enough to freshen her up. This is what I use. It's good for your babies, it's good for the puppies. So I need to clean her up a little bit so she don't stink. Like have any bacteria. Alright. And that's it for that. Get the clean towel here. You dry her off. Never leave her wet. You don't want to get her chilled. You turn the camera back around. Oh, wrong way, sorry. Okay. I need a selfie stick soon if I keep doing this. Okay, so that's basically it for the pooping. Um, sometimes if they're left in there, I have a little heated um, container with a heating pad, but sometimes they will poop on their own, but not mm -hmm. as much as they should. So don't let that like, don't let that um, mislead you. Oh, she's pooping on her own. She don't need my help. Yeah, she does need your help. She doesn't need to poop and pee on a regular basis. Um, so dry her up. Make sure she's nice and dry. Since she's so little, she can get chilled very have a puppy who's cold to the touch do not feed a cold puppy um, they just don't metabolize the milk correctly um, and it's it's a lot of puppies can die that way you got to warm a puppy up before you feed. Sorry about that she has a little bit of a bum leg so um, I'm gonna show you what I do for that I have a little I have almost everything under the Sun here also, never leave a puppy unattended on a counter. Just like anything you would do with a baby, don't do the same thing with them. Just all right. So, gauze pads and um, scissors. So, what happened with her leg is um, moms usually always know best. That's what everybody says, and mom knew she was weak from the start okay so she was trying i would witness her on the camera all night long trying to get her to nurse and stimulate her and um it just wasn't working so she was trying to stimulate her by grabbing her and doing stuff with her well unfortunately she in the process of her good intentions she ripped open a piece of skin right here on her leg um, and as a result, um, her whole leg swelled up, like her whole leg had edema in it. Um, so what we did was we, uh, we wrapped it up, we disinfected the wound so it didn't get bacteria in it. She's also on an uh, antibiotic and, um, to prevent infection. Um, we're using ACE bandages to compress it to keep the edema out of the leg because this was all swollen, but it actually looks pretty great right now. My phone doesn't have the best picture quality, but this is her leg right now. Um, I'll show you in comparison to the good leg. So it's almost the same size as the other leg. It actually looks great. It was really, really swollen. She looked like the marshmallow man. Um, it's got good blood circulation, so it's not like it needs to be amputated. That was one of our worries. Um, it's still warm, so she's getting circulation to it, and she can move it, which is good. So we took her away from her mom just in time, or she might have been missing a leg. And, um, you know, that's one thing with that separates, like, backyard breeders as opposed to small home-based breeders, because 
a backyard breeder would probably just have these puppies in a shed somewhere or, you know, in their back porch, under the porch, whatever. Wouldn't care what mom was doing with the puppies. And, you know, you'll see every now and then a dog missing a leg or you'll hear about a dog, you know, only having two legs because mom shoot off the other two or whatever. That happens all the time. And I'm not pinpointing everybody as a whole, but that usually happens in backyard breeder groups, you know, as a whole, as opposed to any other group. So, and a lot of like puppy mills, I'm not, I don't want to single them out, but since we're talking about it anyway, a lot of puppy mills, they'll just like put puppies like this to sleep. They won't even like bother selling puppies like this. They'll just throw them out with yesterday's garbage. And unfortunately that's how it is. Alright, so this is our ace bandage. This you can get at Tractor Supply. This is not very ex expensive. They actually use these at the hospital for um, people who are on Coumadin. Um, people who are on Coumadin, when they have their blood drawn, they can like bleed out and they need some pressure on for a longer period of time. So um, this is just ace bandaging. You could also use this on horses. That's why they sell it at Tractor Supply. They use this for the bottom of the horse's hooves. But this is, I mean, I've been in the medical field for a long time. This is the same exact stuff they use in um, the lab to wrap up um, your arm after, you know, you're bleeding and you won't stop. Like I said, ma mainly on Coumadin patients. Um, you know, you just cut it to size. That way you have a little bit of a, that's more than enough. That's just, actually, that's a little big, but that's okay. Um, and then you want to cut, well, I usually cut a little bit. Don't put anything on it. Um, you can put Neosporin. I did the first day, however, I don't. I only change this once a day. So if you're gonna put Neosporin on it, unfortunately, with you know, he could have milk come up. He could pee on it. He could be walking through, crawling through his poop. You know, that's all moist and it's dark, and it could get an infection in there. So for this type of wound, um, it's better just to not put anything on it at all. Just initially clean it and just be done with it. And just keep monitoring it. Some vets will actually put glue on it, um, but the vet I went to, my vet I went to on Monday, said she didn't think that was necessary, that it would granulate together on its own, which I agree, and it has been, so it looks really great. So you just wrap it up like a little splint, and then take the new ace bandage. And what my vet told me is, when you have edema in a puppy's paw, do not start like in the middle, start at the end. Because if you start in the middle, what will happen is the paw will swell up. So you want to try to keep the edema out of the leg, but not cut off the circulation. So, you kind of have to like start up at the leg, just make it snug, don't make it like tight, don't get crazy with it. And then wrap it. Nice thing about ace bandages, you don't gotta use tape and they look, isn't that so, like, that's perfect. Um, puppies that we have dew claws with, what I'll do is if, like, they're really deep or big dew claws and they have a little bit of bleeding, I'll put these ace bandages on their back claws just for a day, just to hold down the compression and um, they heal nicely. Most dew claws, you don't have to use nothing. You clip them off, they claw it up and they're good to go, but. Um, for the ones that some puppies have bigger claws and they're like deeper into the skin, I usually use the ace bandages. So that's basically it. She's good for two hours. This I only change once a day because, um, you know, less exposure to me touching it and everything is better for her. So, and it looks good so there's no reason to like uh, disinfect it or do anything to it. It looks really good and clean. And she's doing good. She's even like, I, you probably can't see on the camera, but she's starting that little facial expression. She's moving her eyebrows. So, uh, she's having all, another way you can tell a healthy puppy is, puppies usually jerk. They almost look like they're having seizures. They usually have regular jerking mo movements. And um, a normal puppy will always have those jerking movements. movements. Um, and she, she has those little jerky movements, which is good. Um, it's an indication of a healthy puppy and she's really strong you could tell she's getting heavier so 
I say she started to turn around yesterday afternoon. Up at that point, I thought she was probably going to pass on us. I mean, she still could. I'm not being naive. She still could. Anything could happen. She's not a week old yet. She'll be a week old on Friday. But um, uh, for also when you're nursing a sick puppy, you always want to make sure they're hydrated. Um, a four ounce puppy can get dehydrated within a matter of hours. I mean, it could happen so quick and they could die within like sooner than you blink an eye. One of the ways you can tell um, if your puppy is properly hydrated is all you got to do is pull up on their neck skin. Um, it's hard to see because she's a black puppy, but um, if you pull up on their neck skin and it goes back down, she's properly hydrated. Um, if you touch your puppy and she feels really rubbery and she feels really stiff and um, she can't really move her legs that well, like her skin is like really like, you'll know it. It's one of those things where you'll know it when you feel it. Um, she's dehydrated and you got to get fluids in her right away. Um, only problem is if when they, by the time they get that dehydrated, they're probably going to die. Um, you can't get fluids into them and have them absorb it fast enough where you actually could save their life. Um, I know a couple of breeders who and vets who have used lactated ringers, um, saline under the skin, um, and it saved them, but most of the time um, they passed away. Just because when a puppy is that dehydrated and this small, the kidneys are the first thing to shut down. Kidney function in a puppy cannot take dehydration for any period of time they just can't um so um that's just some of the things i've learned um in breeding dachshunds for the last 10 years now you're not gonna win every you're not gonna save every dachshund um some puppies are just born weak and they have issues and that's just how it's going to be but um i'd say about 60% of them you could probably save, um, but you've got to be like on top of it. Like you've got to be every two hours, you got to be making sure they're pooping, they're peeing, they're warm. Um, a warm puppy isn't going to grow, especially when they're this small and they ain't going to digest their food well, which is another thing. So, um, this, this is what you go through and it's kind of like, I get emails almost every day and questions from people. Why are your puppy so much? It's only a dog. This, that, and the other thing. And it just, <laughs> if you've seen all the work that goes into this, I mean, like, I, this ain't no small scale, like, you know, I'm, I have a little farmhouse in the middle of the country and I, my dog had these puppies into the porch. No, when the moms go in labor, I'm right here. I mean, if we go camping, the dogs go with us. Um, I've, I can't tell you how many female dogs we've taken camping with us who gave birth right in our camper. Uh, we don't leave anything to chance. We don't leave any moms home alone. Um, you know, out of 10 years, we're lucky enough to, ha to say we've only had one female dog who's had a C-section out of 10 years. I can't tell you how many litters that's been. I would have to say that's probably a little over 20 litters and one C-section. That's pretty good, but... Um, there's a lot of puppies that have come close. There's been puppies that have been stuck, um, couldn't get them out, heads too big, coming backwards, two coming out at the same time, placenta coming first sometimes. Um, in those cases, um, a puppy can't live without a placenta. They usually die. Um, it's just, it happens. And, um, you know, it, it's tons of times when I almost called it and then, you know, I gave it one more try and we were able to get the puppy out. But, um, yeah, it, it, and then a C-section, when you do finally decide it's C-section timing, um, get to your vet. Now we're talking anywhere from two to $4,000, depending on where you go. Um, you know, and then you got to, if you have the mom who has complications afterwards and doesn't bounce right back, then you have an added hospitalization fee, medications, antibiotics, oxytocin if you're going that route. It, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. If you're doing it right, breeders don't make a lot of money. Um, they're making money, but they're not making as much as you think. Um, we're basically get it, we're basically covering what we spend and maybe a little pocket change. That's it. If, if that's what you want to even call it. Um, most of our money goes right back into the dogs. I mean, I just, 
spent five, six hundred dollars on vaccines a couple months ago. Um, I spent two hundred bucks to do that on Monday. Uh, you know, I, I spent at least four or five hundred dollars a month on dog food. Uh, it's 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 not cheap, and to be up every two hours and feed them when you have a puppy with a problem, you know, it's it's a lot. You know, it's a lot of stuff, and I, a lot of people take that for granted. Well, it's only a puppy. I can get a puppy anywhere, uh, blah, 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 and, and it's just, if that's the way you think, it's, you're probably not the per kind of person I want to sell a dog to anyway. So, um, a dog's a 10-year ten, a ten year commitment plus, um, but those are my thoughts. Figured I'd make this video. It's been a long time coming. I have got, you can tell I've gotten one too many emails saying why my puppies are too expensive, so... You know, and now let's not even start talking about warmings and vaccinations and other records and health checks before they even go home to you. Let's just just let's just say that the puppy is healthy when he goes home with you. Let's not say that the puppy could possibly have a hernia that I have to fix or some other complication that I got to fix. Or maybe I have to call you at devastating news saying I don't feel comfortable selling you this puppy and then you hating me because... You know, you'd hate me either way if I told you I can't let you have this dog because this puppy has a serious problem. And then you would hate me if I let you have the dog and the dog died in your house. So it's kind of like those people, it's like a no-win situation. And you try not to deal with people like that. Um, I try to tell all my breeder friends, don't don't get involved with the drama. If uh, people usually are ab People usually are as face value and as advertised. If people ask you stupid questions, they're probably people you want to avoid. So, that's why we do the applications now. That's why we do the interviews now. Before we even, like, take deposits and let you in our house, uh, it's just, it's the kind of world we live in. We live in a crazy world. These, this is my house. My children, my family live here. Um, and I also want to know where our puppies are going. So that's one of the biggest things. And uh, I just wanted to bring you in here um, and show you what a typical two-hour feeding session looks like with this little guy. Little girl, I'm sorry. Some people have been saying we should give her a name. I think we'll have a contest of uh, a naming contest, see what people think about name-wise. And then we'll like uh, uh, write down a bunch of choices and have people vote and see see how that goes and we'll let our we'll let our Facebook fans vote a name so uh because over 10 years I can't keep up I could I, I have like 10 names I could call her but you know since uh since I can't think of one I'd call her all of them I, I, I we'll make it fun and we'll we'll do a Facebook naming thing um I seen your post I don't know if you're still online and um mom tore her uh, skin open when she was about two days old, because she was weak and wasn't nursing, so she was trying to stimulate her. So in the process, I we had to disinfect it and um, put an ace bandage on it, because she had some edema in her leg. So this is just to keep the edema down and also keep the wound clean until it heals. Um, Mom didn't tear through any tendons or anything, so everything in her leg is intact. So it should, as Per the vet's words, it should granulate over nicely, and you will never know nothing ever happened to her leg. So, but, yep, she's doing well. Another re another thing I want to point out, um, how you can check on if your puppy's doing good is, um, always look at, um, you know, if you see somebody that's pale, you're like, oh, that person don't look very well. Um, you could always look at their gums. Just look in their mouth. If it's nice and red, they got a nice red tongue and nice pink gums. It means they're getting enough oxygen, their red blood cells are doing great, um, they're doing good. Once those gums turn white and that tongue turns blue or white, you're probably in trouble. So um, always keep an eye on your puppy's tongue if you're nursing a sick puppy to health. And, um, you know, always keep an eye on that. Make sure, like, keep an eye on any nasal discharge or any blood in the stool. You know, those are always uh, issues that you're probably not doing so great but so far I'm happy to report she's doing good and um, I hope uh, in the next coming days she keeps doing better I think if she survives the one week mark which is Friday I think she'll make it 
I can't say 100% now if she will or not. I've seen puppies go both ways. Um, but she's definitely got the best shot here with me. Um, and um, we're going to give her that. So, But I really do think she's doing good. Most puppies at this point would have died already. Um, like my weak ones that are definitely not going to make it usually pass away within the first 24 hours. And we've been nursing her since uh, Monday. So she's... She's over the 24-hour hump, but uh, now she's got to make the one-week mark. And once her eyes open and she's, like, moving around and stuff, she's, she's probably as good as gold. But um, you just got to get her to that point. But she's taking a snooze in my arms right now, or my, my hand, probably arm to her. But, um, yeah, I'll show you my incubator setup. This is her... Uh, heating pad. Um, all it is is really a sunbeam pad. Um, sunbeam, sunbeam heating pad um, with a puppy pad over it. That way, because sometimes they'll leak a little bit of poop. That way you can change this. So if it gets runny, which puppy's poop normally is runny at this stage, you can change it. Um, for um, This ain't no fancy incubator. All this is is a Walmart tote with a flip open top. Okay, it keeps the it keeps the heat in nicely. It has an attachable lid, um, so you can clean this out with bleach between puppies or litters. Um, also, a sunbeam pad is plastic, so you can sanitize all this between litters. Uh, what I normally do is she's pretty warm right now, so I don't think I have to do it. But if you have a really cold puppy, you want to get a real nice, like thin fleece blanket, not a sheet. Sheets don't hold retain well retain enough uh, warmth. You want to get like something fleece, something a little thicker, but not too thick, not like comforter th thick. And just like wrap them up like this. If you get a real cold puppy, just leave their head exposed. She can see her. That keeps whatever body heat they are making and it kind of makes it like a little greenhouse effect. But uh, we ain't gonna do that because she's actually pretty warm. You don't want to get them too warm. You always got to check their temperature. For the sunbeam pad, I leave it on a medium. Uh, for newborn puppies, when they're first being born, I usually put it on high because this is opened all the time, so the heat escapes. But um, since she ain't a newborn, newborn, um, I just leave it on medium. It's it's nice and warm, like it's not like scorching hot. So um, yeah, it's not a replacement for her mother, but for right now, it's the next best thing. So, but that's my incubator setup. Um, yeah, I think I said a lot. I don't know what else to say. Uh, we have a girl dog that's in early labor. Her temperature dropped last night, Brittany. Um, when her puppies come, I'll post pictures, of course. Um, and, uh, I think it'll be before the weekend. So, I'm gonna have to get my other one that I have like this out. I have two of these. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to get another heating pad because I only have one. So that way I have one for her puppies if one of her puppies has an issue. So, so uh, we will say goodbye for now. And um, maybe I'll make another post tonight or something. Seemed like I uh, got some good feedback and uh, a lot of viewers. So, all right, everybody. You have a great Wednesday and um, stay safe. All right. Happy hump day. Bye.